Hi, and welcome along to AFTV. We've got a very special AFTV today because we are speaking to a special guest. We got Keith from Irish Footy Vlogs. I thought we'd get him on today because, of course, Arsenal taking on Dundalk in the Europa League. And I'm going to be real honest right now, and this is no disrespect, absolutely no disrespect to Dundalk whatsoever. I'm just being honest. I hardly, I don't know much about them. I've, I've heard of Dundalk, obviously. I've seen Dundalk mentioned over the years. But I don't really know nothing about Dundalk. So I thought, let me get an expert on, right? Irish footy vlogs, Keith, I know you talk a lot about Irish football. I mean, tell us about your channel, first of all. Yeah, basically, Robbie, it's Irish footy vlogs. So it's all, it's Irish football related, obviously. Mainly League of Ireland. So the Premier Division and the First Division. I do weekly shows, previews, reviews, uh, interviews of players. I did match day vlogs, but obviously with the COVID, that's kind of been knocked off a little bit. Um, talk about the inter international side, um, Irish players in England, for example, as well, and that kind of thing. Um, that's pretty much it, Robbie. Pretty much it. There's all those other bits and pieces, but that's the main, the main stuff anyway. Well, brilliant. Well, you're the person that I needed to speak to, right? <laughs> you are the person I needed to speak to. And every Arsenal fan out there wants to know about Dundalk because when it came out in the draw, first of all, I was absolutely gutted because I'm like, what a great place that would have been to go to. I love going to these clubs that we've never really visited before. And as far as I've known, I've never known Arsenal to play Dundalk before. So this would have been a first. It would have been amazing for their fans there to have got all the Arsenal fans come in. It would have, and I know it would have been at the Aviva Stadium, they were saying. Um, why was it going to be at the Aviva, first of all? Uh, well, Robbie, Oriel Park only holds 4,500 people, and that's not all seating, so it clearly it just wouldn't have been big enough, basically. I was talking about Tallis Stadium, Shamrock Rovers, I think they hold 8,500, nice little stadium, all seater. But, you know, the Aviva Stadium, if it's like of Arsenal and teams like that, it has to be in the Aviva Stadium, you know? Yeah, I've been to Aviva before, very nice stadium as well. I know that's where they do all the rugby and everything, but it's a great stadium. Um... So tell us about Dundalk. Who are they? What, 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 what can we expect from Dundalk? Well, Dundalk, basically, they're from County Loud. I don't know if anyone's heard of County Loud, but you're talking about 90 minutes from Dublin. So, you know what I mean? They're kind of regional. They're outside Dublin and that. Um, they're called the Lily Whites. That's their, their nickname. They wear white what? and black. Hold yeah, on, they're called on. the Lily... <laughs> Rewind here. Rewind. <laughs> the Lily Whites. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear that word Lily Whites now. Now I'm thinking, now we need to smash these lot. <laughs> Lily Whites. Their color is actually white. Yeah, white shorts, black shorts. So kind of similar oh, enough, dear. actually, to uh, the good old Spurs there, Robbie, I think. Um, I think they've won 12 league titles overall. Seven of them have come in the last decade. So that tells oh, you wow. something. They've won various FAI Cups, which is like the FA Cup in Ireland. Uh, Stephen Kenny, the current, current Irish boss. Um, you know, he took over in 2013. He won most of those titles with them. He's masterminded this. They do have American owners, so they are backed by American owners. But this is our second time in the Europa League as well, Robbie. The first time they beat teams like Bata Borislav 3 0, which are great mm. results. Or beaten 2 1 by the likes of Zenit, St. Petersburg. They beat um, Tel Aviv as well, and they drew with AZ Alkmaar. So these are the type of results they've had oh. in Europe. Now, in my view, I don't think they're as good now as they were then. Um, Kenny is a big loss to them as well, to be honest with you. But, you know, they have a bit of pedigree in Europe in the last number of years, to be fair to them, and they've dominated Irish football. Well, well they've, got, they've, got, they've got a good pedigree in the competition if they've beaten those type of teams because, you know, Zenit, AZ, Altmar, and those are decent teams. So, um, but you're saying that they've been, what, fallen on hard times or what, they've just fallen off form? What, what's been... Yeah, I mean, Kenny left... What are we talking about? Two seasons ago to take the Irish under-21 job. He's now obviously the senior manager. Vinnie mm. Perks' his assistant took over. Now, the first season under Pert was quite good. They obviously, they, you know, they got within a penalty shootout, Robbie, of actually winning the treble, the domestic treble, which would have been the League Cup, FAI Cup, and obviously the championship in which they won. But for some reason, the next season, they kind of fell off a cliff. Robbie, this is this season. And I think there were six when Vinnie Perth was sacked. We're talking about a league with 10 teams. So mm. six was nowhere good enough for Dundalk. Mm. Nowhere mm. good enough. Um, there seemed to be hassle behind the scenes. I don't know exactly what went on, but clearly 
the manager fell out with players. I was actually told that before the even season even started. So when I seen results go astray, you know, when that happens, I think players they drop off, don't they? It's not one hundred percent. It could be seventy five percent. Uh, subconsciously you're not putting in the full effort and eventually he had to go so they brought in a new manager called Filippo Giovagnoli he's an Italian he's come from America uh, we didn't know an awful lot about him but he has got managed to steady the ship a little bit Robbie and they're now in the Europa League so fair play to him for doing that but domestically they're fourth they haven't won the championship this year Shamrock Rovers uh, lifted the trophy last week so you know mm. Um, and of course, they 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 played last week. They had um, their opening yeah. game against Molda, and they were actually in the lead in that game. Didn't go on to win it. How did they get on in that game? How did they play? They started very well. Uh, they dominated most of the first half. Molda seemed to be, I won't say second gear, but kind of hanging out a bit to see what Dundalk were like. Dundalk went in front after 35 minutes and led till half time. But almost immediately, Malda up the tempo. And the five minutes before half time, they looked like scoring. So that worried me watching it into the second half. And Malda, to be honest, completely dominated the second half, Robbie. And they deserve to win a 2 1. Um, the dock huffed and puffed, laid on a few crosses into the box, and that as Malda kind of sat back a little bit. But look, it was good effort, Robbie. You know, Malda are a bigger club than the dock. Not only that, but the facilities in the Norwegian League are pretty decent compared to mm. the League of Ireland. And, you know, they were they made it competitive, to be fair. But um, Malda obviously deserved to win the match. Mm. Um, so who are, the, who are the players that we have to watch in the that Dundalk team? Who, who are the star players? Definitely Michael Duffy, who's a left winger. Um, there's been a few calls for him to actually be called up to the Irish senior team. I don't think he's played as well as this season as he has done. He's been part of that success story pretty much all the way with Dundalk. Um, tricky enough winger, as is Chris Shields in the centre midfield. He's been part of the success story from the beginning under St- uh, Stephen Kenny. Um, he's a good leader. He's a typical, you know, captain. He's a good player. Patrick Huben up front's the top scorer in the league. Um, mm-hmm. But in fairness, you know, there hasn't been many great goal scorers in the league this season, Robbie. Um, he's the all-time record scorer as well at Dundalk, by the way. Got 32 goals two seasons ago as well. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> he's, look, these are players that you just have to be mindful. Obviously, Arsenal have better players. We all know that. But, you know, I'm sure Atesha has studied these players and know all about them. Sean Gannon, right back, is a good player as well. He's been the best right back in the league, I'd say, for the past six or seven years. So, I'd say they're their key players, Robbie, to be honest. If, if you was... Um, obviously, I know that you, you, you follow English football as well. Mm. If you was to put Dundalk into a league in English football, what league would they be in, honestly? I would suggest you've got obviously the Premier League, you've got the Championship. I would say lower regions of League One, to be perfectly honest with you. Okay. Um, you know, you see FA Cup shocks, Robbie, as well. Like, you know, you just don't know um, what can happen. Like, so oh, I would yeah. say, so I'd say. Yeah, I'd say a couple of years ago, they were definitely stronger a couple of years ago, Robbie. There's no doubt about that. Um, and I would have fancied them a few years ago to have actually possibly beaten Mulder, if you get me. Um, mm. But a lot of players... They have a lot of players that have actually followed this journey nearly from the beginning. I think they have six or seven players. And I just think it's starting to take its toll a little bit at this stage. And they need you know, a bit of a reboot for me. Um, but that said, it's the second time they've gone to Europa League. They've managed to get in there. It's the third time an Irish side has got into the Europa League, and that's been on the last decade, Robbie. So, you know, you have to give the credit there, but I think I'd have them in the lower regions of League One, which is the third. Isn't that the third highest league in England? It is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, roughly there, I think, Robbie, to be honest with you. Yeah, so you'd expect Arsenal to to get away. I mean, I kind of feel a little bit sorry for the Dundalk players and fans, the fact that, you know, you would have been coming to an Emirates stadium. Uh, you know, it, I mean, they're still, obviously still coming there, but with fans in there, it would have been the, the biggest game of their lives. Obviously, mm. now they're not going to have that. I mean, how have the fans of Dundalk, what have they felt around the game? Because they must have mixed emotions. They, I'm sure with the amount of Irish people that we have in this country, especially in London, they would have come out in force. Oh, 100%. No, they're looking forward to it. But yeah, it's a massive disappointment that they can't travel to London. And uh, 
used to say that Dundalk will be in Europa again, like, you know, that kind of way in the next couple mm. of years and playing a team like Arsenal away, even Arsenal at the Aviva, for example. Um, there was a game a couple of weeks ago, Robbie, it's kind of relevant in a way, but Shamrock Rovers played AC Milan in yeah. Tallis Stadium and there was no crowd there. And a lot of people were thinking the one-year crowd can't go to games and Shamrock Rovers are taking on AC Milan and obviously Dundalk have a double header, if you like, with Arsenal. It's a shame. It's a big disappointment, you know. In that game itself, by the way, Shamrock Rovers played quite well and uh, they mm. lost 2-0, but, you know, they created yeah, chances in that game as well. Yeah. That's right. They did him mm. and Milan have started the Serie A very strongly, haven't they, as well? So, yeah. uh, you know, so Dundalk can look at that, to be honest, Robbie, and say, look, OK, we haven't been as good this season, but we've beaten Shamrock Rovers for the past few seasons, do you get me? Um, you know, there's no reason... They, they have to think, you have to have belief, it doesn't matter what team you play yeah. for. But they have to look at that game in particular and say, look, we're every bit as good individually as Shamrock Rovers because we've proved that in the past. Let's go out against Arsenal and give, you know, give it a right go. And you just never know. Arsenal obviously hot favourites. Yeah, well, obviously as an Arsenal fan, <laughs> I hope that we, we, we do. The, I think Arsenal will put out um, a decent team. You know what I mean? I think Arsenal, there'll be a lot of changes because we've got Man United at the weekend. But even though young players that come in will have a lot of experience, they've played in a lot of these type of games. So um, you would expect an Arsenal win. But as you said, Arsenal can't be complacent. There's been shocks, bigger shocks than this in the past. So, you know, and, and it, it wouldn't go down well if if we uh, got beaten by it. Even get taken to a close game by Shamrock Rovers. <laughs> You'll have fans losing it over that. Um, but no, I'm looking forward to the game and um, really appreciate you giving us a great rundown on Shamrock Rovers and on Irish football as well. Really appreciate it, Keith. Once again, tell everybody, tell everybody where they can come to when they want to get great information on Irish football. Yeah, guys, so type in Irish Footy Vlogs, basically, Robbie, on YouTube. Um, I also have an Instagram as well, it's at Irish Footy Vlogs. So um, that's it, really. That's it. That's it, really. It's brilliant. Really? <laughs> it's an Irish thing, Robbie. It's an Irish thing, Robbie. <laughs> the, the one Irish thing I don't want to see on Thursday is the luck of the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, as I said, shame that, um, shame that we couldn't get out there um, for the game. I would have really loved to have been out there in Ireland, but maybe next time it is what it is at the moment. But thanks very much, Keith. Really appreciate it. 